It's Don here from the board. Thanks for coming along and checking out this video. Today's video is going to be, I guess, a very quick look at the Magic Force 68 and then a very long follow on on that in trying to fix it. Now, the backstory on this is that one of our fans, one of our viewers, listeners, Mitenole, has been really generous and actually sent me this Magic Force 68 keyboard. But it has some defects on it and they actually just decided it wasn't worthwhile for their time to try and fix it up. So he's actually donated it to me to be part of my keyboard library concept. And if you are new to this channel and you've not heard my keyboard library concept before, what it is is that I want to build a whole series of keyboards where they have different switch types since if you buy a switch tester and it has a single switch of each type, it's actually not indicative of a how the full keyboard feels like when you type using that switch type. So I wanted to build together 60% size keyboards, one of a whole variety of different switch types that could go to meetups. Now me being in Sydney, there's a lot of people in Sydney who can reach out to me and either I can meet up with them, I can go to meetups, or if it's in other states, it can potentially go into a suitable container for shipping and be sent down to the meetup for people to try and then sent back. So that's my idea. I've been buying kits that are still yet to come in that I'll put together with a whole bunch of different switches. I've got 10 different switch types already that I'm going to put together and Miteno Lay decided to help out with that and provide me with this that has box yellows in it. So let's get down to business and have a look at what this Magic 468 is all about. Now, you'll have to excuse my desktop here because obviously I've got a whole bunch of tools ready to play Keyboard Doctor with later. And here it is in all of its shiny glory. Now, it's a 68 key, well, 68%, I believe. Magic 468, I think that's what it's called. There's like a sticker on the back here. It's not plugged in, obviously, at the moment. Yeah, 68 keys. Ooh, there we go, 68 keys, mini mechanical keyboard, 5 volt, 300 milliamp. Now it does have lighting in it, and I kind of tested it before to figure out what the dickens was going on with it. Uh, it's a small form factor, it's very light. I'm not going to pull out the scales because there's just stuff everywhere here at the moment. You can see it's got a fairly standard-ish layout in the 60%. What is with my camera focus? Come on, come on, work, work. I think the lighting is messing with it. There we go. Okay, so it's got a fairly standard 60% layout-ish here, except for this last key here. So it's missing the function win key. So they've gone and shifted that. And then they've put in the arrow keys here with a small cluster from the nav cluster. Now, it's a little bit weird because they've got this gap here and it leaves that. Whereas had they actually just bumped all of that across, then you'd get a much closer standard sort of 65% layout as opposed to how it currently looks. It's not jarring or anything like that, but for a lot of keyboard people, if they are well into keyboards by then, looking at this form factor might trigger some people because it's that. That specifically is the issue because these line up, but that <laughs> is not aesthetically pleasing if we want to talk about it that way. It's very lightweight, it's a plastic shell on the bottom, the top is a very, it feels thin, uh, it doesn't have a lot of mass weight to it, but it is, I think, aluminium, because you can feel it that it's cool to the touch. It's got flip out feet, just for a single flip out, it's a rubberized, so that's okay. I would have expected that there would have been rubber on here previously, but because the default switches in this are not gator, uh, pff, gator on, they're not kale box switches. Mintenole has already taken it apart to do this swap. So those rubber feet are gone. Not that you couldn't get replacement rubber feet and, and put them on anyway. So it's interesting because as I push this, this foot is, is providing resistance. This foot is not. So I don't know what's up with that. It's just maybe one side of my desk is smoother than the other. Or it's actually because there's a bit of wobble here. Now, that takes me on to the next point. It's a bottom plastic shell, it's an aluminium top. How much flex does it have? Well, it's got, 
it's pretty rigid, to be honest. It's act I mean, you can you can bend it, you can flex it, but it's actually quite sturdy. And if I pop the feet back in, which I've done, and sort of give it a really good firm push, it's actually quite quite strong. So it's not doing anything weird or unusual. And you can see it's not it's not there's a little bit of this. So the actual case is a little bit not flush. But see now that I've gone and pushed down on it, it's flat again. So you can get it to flex, which means if you do throw this into a bag and it does get moved around, just be aware of that. You are going to introduce some wobble to the case, but you should be able to sort of give it a bit of a flex back. Now, so it's a relatively cheap keyboard, I believe. It's very popular as an entry level keyboard and there's nothing wrong with that. It'll do the job and you know, it's something different. It does have MX keycaps on it, so you can replace it with alternative key sets because this, for example, I believe is a additional tower Pi house set, I think, that's been put on it. I don't know if these stems are cracked because these would have been the earlier generation of the box yellow switches. So if I do pop them off and we see that it's cracked and damaged, that is the reason why. Now, that's pretty much it for the review part of the keyboard. Um, we'll have a look at the lighting when I actually plug it in, but I want to switch over as well to this. And this is switch header. EK switch header. Okay, you can download it from Elite Keyboards' website, and it's a pretty cool diagnostic program to find out what's happening. We already know that the F key is permanently stuck, so when I plug it in, you'll see that the F key will just basically stay lit up the entire time. And as I punch through the other keys, you'll see what other problems that is happening with this keyboard as well. So let's plug this baby in, and is it going to work? Okay, so we've got we've got space bars going good. Now, F is actually not even responding right now, which is oh there we go. Okay, so I managed to pop up F, and it jams. It jams. So you'll see it's permanently stuck down, but at least it works. There's no tilde on this natively. I'm not sure how the layers work on this, but if there are layers, then We'll, uh, we'll discover that at some point, I guess. So as we punch through, interestingly, enter key doesn't work. And of course, there's no wind or menu key because of that bottom row near the arrows, but the left arrow doesn't work as well. So ignoring the fact that we don't have a tilde key, there is no home or end key, which is fine problematic keys is that F key sticks, stays down until you actually manually flick it back up, enter doesn't work, and left arrow doesn't work. So we're going to unplug this, <clears throat> and we will see. Now, Maternal Aid's also provided me with two switches to swap out. Uh, we'll, we'll see what's going on here, because uh, it looks like it might involve three switches. I do have my soldering iron, I've got some screwdrivers and all that kind of stuff, so let's uh, get cracking into the switch doctor bit. Well, not switch doctor so much as uh, keyboard doctoring. Uh, screwdriver, screwdriver. What size are we going to want on these? Probably, we'll try the size zero to start with. Probably not try and get eight. Too many screws up at the same time. 
otherwise I'll lose them. So if you do want to mod one of these, by the way, there is actually no screw under that central point, so don't worry about peeling up that sticker. It's just under the feet in the middle too as well. Crikey. Oh yeah. Being a real klutz this morning, aren't I? What is going on with you? There we go. Interestingly, there is some dip switches here, by the way. Um, I actually don't know what the dip switches change. It's probably a layout related, or it could be OS related. I'd have to go and look that up. But as you can tell from before, I don't have to worry too much about it being an OS related matter in its current configuration because it plugged in and it worked straight away. These are really stubborn screws. Now, it is actually in the middle of the day right now. Um, I have a day off from work because I had too much annual leave and I had to uh, spend some of it. So I thought, what would be a better thing to do than take the day off and uh, have some fun with keyboards? So here we go. Okay, so I've managed to separate it out. Oh, there's a connector here, but before I do that, you get out. Go on, get. Okay. So, if we gently pull that open, you'll see there's a USB header that goes to that daughter board, which I think is pretty neat. It's, it's a good solution, rather than being too reliant on it. So, I'm just going to try and gently Do I want to just take the daughter board off? Yeah, no. Let's, let's take that connection off. It's probably better if I can. Ooh. Ow. Okay. You know what? I'm going to take that daughter board off instead. Uh, just because that will be easier than trying to unplug this Okay, wait. What is with this? These screws. Okay. Get out. Get out. All right. So it's a pretty plain shell on the bottom. There's nothing really to it. It's got some good reinforcing ribs on there. That's for the dip switches, the feet, and cable routing. Nothing too spectacular. So that can move off to one side. And now let's have a look at the back of this. Sounds like an emergency going on out there. Sydney. What can I say? <laughs> All right, so we've got like a breakout header here, which would be interesting if you needed it to. It's probably for programming purposes, for natively flashing it, um, which would not be surprising at all. There's the main chip. There's a whole bunch of breakout related stuff. We've got an enter key there that is obviously not working. And we've also got our left arrow key down here. And we've got our F key there. Now these actually look like they're really well soldered. So I'll say first and foremost, to, uh, to Mutanale, it doesn't look like the solder job is the issue, but what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to reflow these anyway and see if that'll fix the problems for enter and left control straight away, because if it does, then that's fantastic. And it's just a matter of perhaps doing a switch swap with the F switch, if that's the reason why it's getting jammed, because for whatever reason it wasn't sitting in the plate properly or something like that. Now, the other thing I haven't mentioned is that these are plate mounted stabilizers on the Magic Force. You can, you can see through the bottom, there is actually no cutouts for 
stabilizers on the PCB, so all of these are plate mounted stabilizers. Whether these are genuine or not, I don't know, but I can see that they've been lubed, so that's that's pretty cool. Now, I'm just gonna clean my desk a little bit. Utilize my wife's desk while she's not here. Move some things around, and let's power up good old TS100. So here we go. Uh, my world is very cluttered here in, in my little office, but uh, it does the job at the moment. So for those who haven't actually seen any of my early videos and whatnot, I use a solder put solder sucker. It's a metal barreled one, but it's electrostatically safe. Uh, I like this design because the spring is on the outside rather than on the inside, which means you don't have to worry about the spring getting dirty and gummy and stuff like that. It's a really good quality spring and the mechanism is very smooth. It's got a very big fat button and the suction on this is awesome. I've melted the tip a very, very small amount from desoldering a lot taken apart the VEA clone for example and I've used it on some other projects so and you can have kiss of course get replacement tips for that which you know, it's designed for replacement use so my irons now up to temperature it's running at 310 which for lead it is perfectly fine for lead free if it's OEM stuff is probably a little bit on the low side I'd take it up to about 350 if I was going to be desoldering lead free. Now I don't know what Mitenole has used here but what I generally like to do is I will add a little bit of solder to it when I need to desolder just to help because it my my soldering iron sorry my solder has rosin core in it so it's got flux since I don't use flux separately. Uh, so that's just Get that nice and hot, and voila, bam. And of course I punch it out over the actual, uh, this area so I can get rid of any of that excess. But that one shot, so ugh, let's put that down. So, come on, get into focus, there we go. So that adding a bit of solder to it and then reflowing it and then sucking it. Look how clean that one shot pull was out of that F socket there. It was pretty good. Now, let's see if I can get that second one just as clean. Heat it up and bam. It looks good. And of course, you'll see there's all this stuff that's maybe yeah, the focus isn't great but all that's just hanging off it from that single punch it's just really good at, at pulling it out okay so as I said I'm also going to just reflow the enter and the arrow key and see if that'll help its function so let's just reheat that I'm just going to add a bit more solder because if I do need to desolder it, that'll help. Okay. It looks like he was using leaded solder because it flows really nice at 310. Okay. So let's just let that cool. But while that's cooling, I'm going to just put my iron into its holder. And then I'm going to flip it around and use a keycap puller. I'll take the keycap off it. While I'm doing that, let's have a look at the stems. Now, because this is blue plastic, you would expect to be able to see cracking and stretching from these box switches if the stems were actually off. But I can't see any marks on that at all. So it tells me that. Hey. 
it tells me that the stem is actually probably just fine. Like you would ex oh, actually no, there's a little bit of that white marks. I spoke too soon. So, hey, come on. So you see there's at the six o'clock stem crucifix, there's some white lines there. So that's stretching. It hasn't actually cracked all the way through because it doesn't extend down the sides of the actual cruciform, but it has stretched. No, oh, no, I spoke too soon again because on the other side, <clears throat> those stretch marks are visible if the camera will focus. Okay, so you can see the white lines on the top now. That was the other side. I don't think the camera is going to show up because it doesn't have the right lighting angle here. But there is actually some stretch marks that run all the way down. It hasn't fully cracked, but these Taihao uh, keycaps have definitely suffered from cap cracking uh, stems. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of losing my, uh, my verboseness. I need someone that I can punch that out with and <clears throat> reach under my desk, grab out my Allen keys. <clears throat> and I should just be able to, hopefully, ish, there we go, punch out that. Ah, okay, so it's the actual switch itself because if you look at that, I've put it in and it's it's fully jammed up. I don't know what the deal is with that or why it's done that, but I'm just going to uh, crack that open. And let's have a look. So I've just opened it and it's actually jamming in here. It's it's wedging against the mechanism. So let's just be very, very careful. Uh, it looks like there's a bit of deformity here. And so if I hold up that stem one of these days okay there we go so you'll see there's actually some damage on that curvature I think that at the top at around sort of 1230 that's what's caused it that plastic is deformed a little bit and it's actually bent I can see there's actually ripples so you can see see how that's done that it's actually hit it or jammed it and that's what's actually causing it to be stuck which uh, yeah is obviously not not good okay so that's a, a bunk switch at the moment I'm not quite sure so now it seems to be moving freely now that I've sort of taken it out Let's put the uh, ish, the top back on in the right orientation. See if that has fixed it up or not. Now that's sort of had time to relax and undeform. Nope. Okay, so having the actual switch top on it seems to be, it must be an alignment related matter. So that's that's a dead switch. Not a problem. Let's pull out one of these two and hopefully so that's nice and smooth. Okay. LED, correct orientation. Let's put that sucker through it. Snap it in. And we'll be almost bright as rain very shortly. Okay, wait for the iron to come back up, temp. <sighs> and then hopefully we'll also see the uh, enter key and the control key work. If not, then we'll have to see if we can do some kind of diagnostics on it too. Okay, temperature of the iron is back up. So that's... Uh,
Get a lovely join. Okay. So there we have it. F key is back, hopefully, in action. Now we'll give that a couple of seconds. And now it's nice and smooth again. We'll put the uh, cap cracker back on it. It still actually fits really snug. Like it, it doesn't feel at all that it's gonna come off. So I'm not too concerned about that in the slightest. Now I do have another USB here so I don't have to worry about the other cable. Hopefully let's see if I can plug this in and not zap myself. Hey, okay. So the LEDs that I was talking about, you can see it's got some some yellows. Now I don't know if these are also desoldered and resoldered by Nutanile or not, but uh, I don't know what the native, they probably were white, because you can see there's a white one here and then all these are yellow since it's a yellow switch board. Now let's go back over to the right hand side. Let's clear it and enter is still no good. Left is still no good, but the F is now working real good. So, reflowing did not fix the enter key. Oh, I just managed to turn on sticky keys by spamming shift. No, go away. All right. So, back to the diagnostic drawboard. Let's unplug it. Okay. The iron can chill out because it's time for the molly meter. So let's go to some resistance values. And of course we always check that our probes are good. Probes are good. So, where are we looking? Uh, if I touch across here and I push it down, actually I need to get my finger under it, don't I? Okay, so nothing's happening and I press. So it looks like that I do have connectivity when that switch is depressed for the left arrow key. Of course, when I lift it and I contact again, nothing's happening. So the switch is connecting, so that's that's fine. And then for the enter key, okay, so that's the enter key there. And so nothing, and then when I depress it, we get value. So the switch itself is not the problem. The switch itself is not the problem. We are getting closed contacts when the switch is on and depressed. So then, what is the problem? Well, let's just see if we've got some good, so diode to diode. Uh, my bad. Okay, so there we go. So diode to diode. You can see it works, and column to column works as well, because they've gone from this along here up and to that column. So we know that that column works. Um, the tricky part is knowing where the column goes from here, or from enter to somewhere else, because it looks like they might be on the other side of the PCB and I actually have no idea where they've gone with it. That's a diode row, so maybe it goes up to the backspace. Nope. Uh, to pipe. Nope. So yeah, that's that's a real good one. I'm not a hundred percent sure where that the other column is going to. Now let's just trace diode to diode though because 
that is oh, it's going here there we go okay so that's the row and then that row goes to here as well and then there's a via and of course without being able to see the other side of the PCB that gets really tricky um, now if I go to my diode test here so I've got a value across the diodes as it should be so the diode works the enter diode that works as well so I don't actually know what's going on here we've obviously got a connection there and we've got we've got connection to the next row diodes as well hmm I do not know what is what is causing that to uh, not work very very curious my biggest issue is I actually don't know where the columns are going if I don't know where the columns are going I can't really see if I can go from the enter to the right shift to the right control to the bracket to plus minus to insert to delete page up page down hmm it's not going to the up key the down key or that at all so we might actually be looking at that the column is is just a very very short column to the controller as unusual as that would be but uh, it doesn't unless of course that's the reason why these two are, are not working is because that column connection is not working now short of desoldering this entire board and having a look at the traces on the other side I don't think we're going to have much success now I've just gone and done that so it's so it looks like they've gone with diodes in the vertical and columns on the horizontal so logically speaking that should work there yep and then that should work no okay but right control right alt does work that is that is super weird so what they've done here from what I can tell is on this main board section we've got everything running this way from that pin across and then we've got diodes for every other direction but on this section let's see what I can figure out so we've got an arrow column column so it doesn't work that way but it works this way okay so it's still maintaining that same philosophy but my my column see if that'll work that doesn't work that does work so page up to delete this is this is really it's really weird okay so it's still it's still going across because that delete to pipe works but then page down to delete doesn't seem to be working but those two switches actually work but page up to page down works so their key mapping and their programming to do this is is all over the shop goodness gracious me <laughs> so is enter meant to go to I, 
I'm so confused. All right, so short of actually desoldering this entire board, I'm now kind of not sure what's going on because your arrows here match up, but this doesn't and this doesn't. So logically speaking, we have to add jump from right control to left arrow and that should fix left arrow. So, but then right control and right alt connect. These are the points that aren't working there. Now if I go from here to here, I would have expected that to connect as well. So let's try a little bit of uh, bridging. Gotta love me some bridging. Excuse my tracky decks. Let's pull out some wire bits. miscellaneous Y bits. Let's grab that. Let's grab my Y stripper. Probably only need a very small amount of exposure on the end there. Probably a little bit more than that. There we go. doing I've got cutters here now if I need to bridge that either way half of that should be plenty to get across there yes yes it is okay <sighs> now let's heat the iron back up <laughs> need to tin tips on that well don't really need to but it's good practice to <laughs> of course I could completely kill this board and if I did well poop I killed it <laughs> but that's part and parcel of, of learning and doing these kinds of things isn't it now, because I'm not going to be bothered pulling out my helping hands, I'm just going to load up a bucket load of solder on this iron tip, and it's going to be nice and hot, and then I'm just going to heat that up on the copper. Woo! It's hot. Hot, 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 hot. Woo! That gets real hot in the hand. I've kind of partially tinned it. Let's clean that off, and let's go from... So this is really interesting because that trace goes up to there, which then, I don't know where the heck it goes. Before I commit to that, because, you know, I like to make sure of things if I can, it almost looks like it's disappearing and wanting to go over here, but it's not, whereas that is. Because that trace runs up here, comes across here, and turns into a via. A buyer, so then it's a matter of where the heck is it going from there. But let's let's throw intuition to the wind and see if I can get that connected across there first. 
because <clears throat> that's a logical step. Okay. Let's just maybe add a little bit of solder to that because it's, it's pretty weak looking. not pretty but hopefully that'll do the job let's, let's just reheat that reflow it a little bit so it is a little bit nicer okay and then this side can tin up a bit better maybe go add a bit of extra solder on this now it's a really big fat ball Ooh, that's hot ow <sighs> okay that is that is a heck a what do heck So, let's see if that will help. Careful not to zip myself. Keyboard is in. The shift says it's permanently on. And now, I've got something really weird going on. So obviously my matrix is not correct. Uh, so let's go to the right monitor and you can see switch hitter. Shift is permanently on and my down key is actuating on both left arrow and down. So that is obviously an incorrect bridge. But it's interesting that it's actually causing the shift. Okay, so shift. Oi. So shift is obviously not affected. I must have just had it accidentally jammed. But down and left arrow is registering both as down so that's that's not correct <laughs> um yeah you know what i've got some diagnosti bits here from when i was breadboarding let's just pull out one of these clips and while I've got it plugged in, because I can get my finger underneath that, and so you'll see it's going to be constantly reading the down. If I can touch that to, to other points, maybe. Ah, look at that. Okay, so it's actually meant to go from that. Oh my god. Okay, so it's gonna jump from the that comma key. Okay. So let's switch the monitor off. So it's actually gonna go from this key here to here. And that's actually what was causing that triggering. So I'm gonna desolder that and of course I'll use the pump because I don't want to have massive solder ball there. Get it nice and hot and away it goes. Just means I gotta uh, re solder that switch in a moment anyway. Let's get rid of that as well. It just means I'm going to need a, a longer bit of wire too. Okay, there's the end of my solder. So let's get right control. There you go, you can be a happy chappy. And I'm just going to ref 
fill you up a little bit. Good, good connection there. So I'm going to need a longer piece of wire. I'm going to go from there to there. Now in theory, if I make that jump, actually if I jump from there to there, because that's connected, that should work as well. So maybe I won't need that longer wire, but what I'll do is I will try. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tuck my finger under. Let's just reset that. Okay. So down works perfectly fine. That doesn't work again enter doesn't work. But what I'm going to do is stick my finger onto the down key and then I'm going to clip the contact between those two and left lights up. So then if I put my finger under the enter key and I touch those same points again, enter key lights up. Oh, diggity. Okay, so plan is to jump from the comma key to the enter key, and that will be sufficiently long enough. Okay, so both of these are tinned. Let's rumble. Heat that up. Come on. Okay, that's efficiently contacted. Okay. Now, for the moment of truth, and it works. Ooh, so happy. <laughs> right monitor, let's go clear. And we now have, uh, ooh, come back that way. So big fat yellow enter, the enter works, and then the left control, I mean left arrow key, and then F key. Success, success. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm just going to, ooh, careful not to melt my plastic bag. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to redo that with a little bit more solder. So it's going to be a nicer connection. Of course, the Y wants to get out of there because it's under strain from flexing. Hey, you, get back. All right. And then this side as well. Hey, no, don't do that. There we go. Fix this side again. There we go. Ow. Nope, that's not a very good one. Let's try that again. Add a bit more solder. Yeah, there we go. Whew. We now have a fully working Magiforce 68. So let's just uh, prep out my soldering iron. What that tells me though is that the way that they've laid out the Magiforce grid is really silly. Um, yeah, it's it's not a smart. Well, I can't really criticize about smart or not smart in this context because that's just how they've made it work. But I don't know why it goes from the enter down to the left arrow as it's connecting column row when logically they should have just run it across the bottom like they did with everything else. But I'm glad that at least uh, we were able to sort that out and get this board back on its feet.
Man, solder takes a long time to, to cool down, doesn't it? So besides the fact that we've got one mounted switch, and that's because the actual stem seems to have been damaged, and it's jamming on the actual housing somehow, it must be alignment issues, because it was moving freely without the actual top being on. The moment I put the top on, it must be pushing the actual stem in a certain orientation, which is what's causing it to, to stick. So that's that's a dud. But we didn't have to swap out the switches on those other two keys for it to work, which is really, really cool. So spare wire bits. You can go back into your little packet. And you can go back where your home is. Multimeter, you can, you can go back to your home. I got stuff everywhere. Okay, so let's just pull you up and away. Spare switch. And start putting some of these bits back together. So I need to get that daughter board reattached correctly. So it needs to. All right, so that's the bottom, which means that way. Yep, that way. So it will need to go that way. Yeah, just like that. Okay. All the holes line up. treat these like a, uh, a car tire. You never do them around circularly because you'll never get them tight properly, but instead you need to do them in opposites. So So they weren't behaving magnetic before when you didn't want to come out of your bloody sockets. Now you're going to ag magnetic, aren't you? Ish. Okay. Steven, what's it doing? 
Is it free spinning? I haven't put enough bloody torque on this thing for it to be free spinning. It's just free spinning. Okay, so the screw's out. Pop that one out. I think I've stripped it. Ah. Okay, so the actual screw hole itself is slightly misaligned. And the case flex is part of the reason for that because this plastic shell flexes enough that it doesn't actually get perfectly on. You in now? No. Goodness. Come on. Get your... I'm getting defeated by a single screw here. Killing me. It's interesting because as I'm messing with this screw, I can actually feel this escape switch moving. Come on, man. Get out. Get out. There we go. So if I show you if the lighting will work. Uh, you can just see that silver edge of the screw hole. It's like half, maybe a quarter of the screw hole position out, which is annoying because that means the case ain't gonna fit, is it? I'll try and flex it creatively. You in? No. For God's sakes. You know what? I'm I'm just not gonna I'm not gonna drag this out any further because the last ten minutes you've just been sitting here watching me try and get this damn screw in. I'm going to fix it up, I'm going to get it all sorted, and it's going to be put back together properly, and that'll be the end of that. So, um, what we've been able to see, at least to for today, is a quick look at the Magi Force, uh, determining what was the cause for this sticky switch, as well as being able to fix enter and left arrow. So now, I have the first keyboard in the keyboard library with the Kale box yellows. So thank you very much to Nutenole for sending me this as well as the spares so that I could play around with it, actually check out the board and have a keyboard in the collection. Of course, thank you guys for actually hanging around and watch me get defeated by a single case mounting point. Not, uh, not something that I was expecting to happen today at all. So if this is the first time that you've ever come across our content, We'd love it if you want to hit that subscribe button and check out all of our other mechanical keyboard related content. And of course, for everybody else, you know how it goes. If you like it, please hit like. And of course, if you'd like other people to check out the keyboard and how you would go around diagnosing and fixing a keyboard if you've got problems, please hit share as well. So once again, thank you for checking out this video. And of course, until next time, happy clacking. <laughs>